just as we return, we're away with the next of our tribute to champions event here at uh, Sandown Park. This is part number three, four laps again the distance. As Evan had said earlier, they prefer not to call them races, demonstrations, or uh, call them what you like, but these, uh, these past champions, of course, out there to, uh, to try and get around the circuit as quickly as they possibly can. And leading the fray at the moment, we have Alan Jones side off the uh, Porsche because uh, he just can't fit in it so he's gone air-conditioned style again uh, and here he leads up the back straight the Porsche was the car that won the world championship for endurance racing in 1968 a three-liter engine a very fast motor car 350 horsepower and Alan Jones going very quickly probably as fast as the car was driven in 1968 I would think Alan loving it here today. One of the disappointments, I'm sure, is the fact that the Maserati 250F, the car that his father, the great Stan Jones, drove with such distinction in Australia, didn't survive some uh, mechanical troubles in practice. In fact, it burnt a piston. And rather than try and scramble around on five cylinders and do damage, the cars had to be withdrawn. So Alan is contenting himself with driving the Porsche, doing it very well. But I'm sure he would have loved to have driven the car that his father had driven in Australia. In fact, we've all seen the photographs, I'm sure, of young Alan Jones, just a a kindergarten age boy sitting in the seat of the car while his father was collecting the garland for having won the Australian Grand Prix. Looks like Jack Brabham also yes. in the Repco Brabham. Jack driving very hard in the Mercedes last time, which uh, both historic cars, but I suspect he would have been more embarrassed had he dented the Mercedes than had he dented this. When he had brake troubles with Mercedes, he went on the grass, in fact, and there were many people sucking their breaths in in deep volumes, notably the custodians from the Dame Bins Museum in Stuttgart, because it's the first time they'd let the car out of the country. But Jack chasing Alan Jones. Between these two, they won a lot of Grand Prix. In fact, they really have put Australia very high up on the honour roll of people who've done well in motor racing. Jack Brabham has taken the title three times. Alan Jones has won it four. And you know, an incredible statistic is that Australia ranks number three in the world, sorry, number four in the world, in the nation that has won the most Grand Prix. The winner is Great Britain, not to be uh, not unexpected, I'm sure, but second is Argentina, due largely to the efforts of drivers like Fangio and before him, Fraulein Gonzalez. Number three is America, which might surprise you, but Mario Andretti and Phil Hill and Dan Gurney and uh, Richie Ginther and so on have done their bit. And then Australia comes next, one race ahead of Italy, ahead of France, Even ahead of Even though Ken mcmahon has been commentating races. 20 years here at Sandown, John, I've been coming for 20, and I do remember that sort of car, so I'm... Uh, Jack Brabham is uh, starting to uh, stretch out down Sandown's main straight. Jack uh, won the, uh, the first outing in the Tribute of Champions this morning, then, of course, climbed into the uh, Maserati for the, uh, the second, and at this stage, uh, I think, would really be probably uh, a, not only a ball here today, but also trying to win each of the, uh, the demonstration events. And would it, feel very much at home right now, I'm sure. sure. It was a phenomenal achievement by Jack Brabham and his partners with Repco and uh, people like Phil Irvin, who was the engine designer. When the formula changed in 1966 to three litres, the formula which still exists, it had been one and a half, a lot of the factories went for very complex designs. And Jack Brabham and Ron Toranak, his partner, and Phil Irvin from uh, Repco and the other people in that uh, very uh, knowledgeable group of engineers who uh, formed Repco, decided they'd build an engine that would be reliable and powerful enough to win. They sat down and worked out they'd need about 350 horsepower. They designed the Repco Brabham V8 engine, which was based on the, the old Buick V8, uh, an aluminium alloy V8 that the Buick had designed and then not gone ahead with because of the cost of manufacturing. In fact, they sold the, the block to Rover and it ultimately became the engine of the P76 in Australia. But with that basis, an Australian design motor, a single overhead cam engine, went out and won two world championships on the score of the driver's flair and the reliability of the engine. Jack Brabham won in 1966, and his teammate, the New Zealander Denny Hull, won the following year in 1967. Jack Brabham was the first and still is the only person ever to have won the World Drivers' Championship in a car of his own design. That's the car, that's the driver. It's an historic moment here at Sandown to see Jack Brabham going around, particularly in such close company with a man like Alan Jones, who I'm sure will be regarded as one of the great drivers of all time when people put his performances in proper perspective. Certainly one of the most tigerish drivers, a man with immense fighting spirit. Jack Brabham blasting by, first of all, the, the uh, Alfa Romeo of 1935 and then the Ferrari of 1951 in his car of 1966. And there we have a, a driver, I suspect, lining up for a, a run in an historic car, none other than Malcolm Fraser. 
He said, well, if a man of Jack Rabbin's age can run around there, why can't I, who are two years younger, have a go myself? He's a great enthusiast, was a collector of Lancia cars. Uh, he now runs, I think, a little Alpha Sud and a Commodore. He's, uh, he's a man who appreciates good, good motor cars. And there's no doubt that uh, it's, it's an honour to have the Prime Minister here attending the function, not just in an official capacity, but as a, an avid enthusiast. The flag goes out. Jack Rabbin was one. Alan Jones, if you care who wins, <laughs> the whole concept of these runs is to pay homage to the drivers and to look at these magnificent motor cars circulating. They'll be out again and have a chance to look at some more. Drivers like Sterling Moss and uh, John Surtees, Jack Rabbin, Denny Holm, and some of the drivers of more recent vintage, uh, Alfredo Costanzo, Larry Perkins, and some ones of years ago, Tony Gaze, Dick Cobden, Reg Hunt, David Mackay, Bill Patterson. The Ferrari, beautiful car, the Alpha P3. The driver sits up high, as I was saying earlier, you wouldn't want to put it on its roof because you'd be the first to know. And Alan Jones, still with the door missing because he just doesn't fit, despite the fact that they've recobbled the car. Sterling Moss went very slowly, by the way, in the C-type Jaguar, the 1953 car that was raced by the Scottish team at Curia Cost because the brakes weren't working. And Sterling, no matter how enthusiastic, doesn't like driving a car without brakes. Let's hope he's not handing the C-type over to our Prime Minister, who's donning up. We'll just wait to see what car he's getting in, but I suspect it's going to be one of the historic cars because that's where his interest lies. My goodness me, they must have got a big helmet there. He might be going to drive the Mazza back to the lodge. Well, he might be getting in with Alan Jones. He'll need a two-seater. That is a nominal two-seater, but if Alan Jones doesn't fit, you can imagine what the Prime Minister, who is about a foot higher, will do to that car. So we'll see just what car pulls up to give our... Uh, our number one enthusiast, a run around the Sandown Park circuit. Could be Alan Jones. He certainly seems to be coming down at a slowing pace, as though he knows that something is required of him. 